This guide covers all the actions Arcanist and Summoner learns from level 1 to 50 in order. We go over how each action is meant to be used and recommend ways to use it when relevant. In the summary, we will cover a detailed attack rotation for use at level 50 that encompasses all of the things you learn throughout this guide. Now then, Ruin is your starting spell and it functions as your filler spell that you use when there is nothing else more important to cast. Its cast time enables you to fit one ability after every cast without delaying your spell casts. At level 2, you learn the spell Summon Carbuncle, which, as implied, summons a carbuncle at your side. Carbuncle does not really do much on its own, but is required to be present to enable many of your more powerful spells, and so you should always make sure Carbuncle is summoned before you engage in combat. You also learn the ability Radiant Aegis, which commands Carbuncle to shield you for a significant amount of damage. This ability should be used when you are either actively taking damage or are about to. Because of the long duration of the effect, you can benefit from using it way in advance if you know you're going to take damage. It is worth considering that Radiant Aegis is not available when Carbuncle is not present, which happens to be the case for around 5 seconds whenever something else is summoned in its place. At level 4, you learn the spell Physic, which is a basic healing spell. However, it scales with mind rather than intelligence, so as your level grows, this spell will become less and less helpful, so don't rely on it. At level 6, you unlock the Trance Gauge, as well as a handful of spells that interact with it. Either Charge is a spell that empowers your Ruin spell for 15 seconds, tracked in the Trance Gauge, enough time to finish casting around 5 of them. It also grants you a Ruby Arcanum. Either Charge should be used on cooldown as soon as you have spent all of your Arcanums completely. While the buff from Either Charge holds, Ruin should be prioritized over all other spells in your arsenal, as the potency boost from Either Charge makes Ruin your strongest attack by far. You also learn the spell Summon Ruby, which, at the cost of a Ruby Arcanum, instantly summons a Ruby Carbuncle to strike your target, and grants you two Fire Attunement stacks that last a total of 30 seconds. To spend any Attunement stacks, you learn the spell Gemshine, which turns into Ruby Ruin while you have Fire Attunement. Ruby Ruin spends one Attunement stack per cast, and has a much longer cast time than regular Ruin. At this level, Ruby Ruin does around 18% more damage per second than casting regular Ruin, and so you should prioritize casting Ruby Ruin when possible. Note that you have 30 seconds to spend both stacks, so if something in the fight causes you to not have the time to cast Ruby Ruin, you can use regular Ruin while looking for an opportunity. At this level, your rotation is simply to cast Ether Charge, spam Ruin until the buff ends, then summon Ruby, cast Ruby Ruin twice, and then regular Ruin until you can cast Ether Charge again. At level 8, you learn the role action and ability Addl, which causes your target to do less damage for a bit, with magical damage being reduced twice as much. The best time to use Addl is when you're expecting a large amount of damage from an enemy, especially if you know it will be magical. Good examples include when a boss is casting a party-wide attack, or a large strike on the tank. At level 10, you unlock the Aetherflow gauge and learn the ability Energy Drain, which does some damage and gives you two Aetherflow charges. Make sure to use Energy Drain when it is available, between Ruin casts. You can also use it right after Aether Charge or Summon Ruby due to them being instant. The concept of casting abilities between spells like this is commonly referred to as Weaving. To spend Aether Flow, you learn the ability Fester, which simply does some damage immediately and, like Energy Drain, should be used between your spells as possible. As Energy Drain has a 1 minute cooldown, you have a lot of time to find opportunities to cast Fester. However, you should always make sure to spend all of your Aether Flow before casting Energy Drain again, should you ever be in the position of having to make such a decision. Also at level 10, you learn the role action and spell Sleep. However, outside of extraordinary situations or perhaps solo situations, crowd control is rarely used at all, so you may never find this spell very helpful. At level 12, you learn the spell Resurrection, which brings a dead player back to life. Be aware that it costs a lot of MP and takes ages to cast. When a player is resurrected this way, they lose some of their primary attributes, like strength, for a while, resulting in doing less damage. This is a minor issue. More importantly, when a player is resurrected, they are completely impervious to damage and negative effects caused by damage for 5 seconds, unless they do anything other than movement. Using Sprint also removes the effect. At level 14, you learn the ability Lucid Dreaming, which recovers a massive amount of MP over 21 seconds, and, like Energy Drain, can be used between spells. Use Lucid Dreaming whenever your MP drops below 8000, to make sure you stay at a very healthy amount. Overall, Arcanists and Summoners don't spend that much MP, but if you ever have to resurrect someone, forgetting about Lucid Dreaming can quickly cause problems. At level 15, your Aether Charge is upgraded to also grant a Topaz Arcanum when used. 
You also learn the spell Summon Topaz, which instead summons a Topaz Carbuncle, and instead grants 4 Earth Attunement stacks, which are spent with Gemshine in the same way. With Earth Attunement, Gemshine turns into Topaz Ruin, which, while being instant, does exactly the same damage as regular Ruin. This makes Topaz Ruin incredibly helpful if you have to move a lot, however, it is worth pointing out that Arcanists and Summoners have a surprisingly high strength stat. And Topaz Ruin being instant gives you great opportunity to run up to an enemy and give them a smack with your book in between casts for a very noticeable damage gain. A reliable way to start auto attacking is using the auto attack button from the general menu in your actions and traits. I also have a short about mage auto attacks if you want to learn a bit more on the subject. The order in which you choose to spend your Arcanums is up to you, as long as you make your way through spending all of them before using Ether Charge again. Note that you cannot have two different attunements simultaneously, so make sure to completely spend one before summoning the next. At level 18, you learn the role action and ability Swift Cast, which allows you to instantly cast your next spell. The most helpful way to use this ability is to instantly cast Resurrection when your party needs it. However, if that is unnecessary, you can use it right after summon Ruby to cause your first Ruby Ruin to skip its cast time. This does not change the fact that Ruby Ruin incurs a 3 second spell recast time compared to the normal 2.5 seconds, so this is not a damage gain unless you actually need the spell to be instant because you have to move. Another way to use it is to weave Swift Cast after your 5th Ruin during Ether Charge to make the 6th Ruin instant, possibly making it land within the Ether Charge buff window. At level 22, your Ether Charge is upgraded to also grant an Emerald Arcanum when used. You also learn the spell Summon Emerald, which instead summons an Emerald Carbuncle, and instead grants 4 Wind Attunement, which are spent with Gemshine in the same way. With Wind Attunement, Gemshine turns into Emerald Ruin, which is also instant like Topaz Ruin, but has a shorter cooldown between casts, but also does less damage than regular Ruin. Emerald Ruin does around 11% more damage per second than regular Ruin despite this, so it should still be used when it is available. Make sure to utilize auto attacks between the instant spell casts. Once again, the order in which you choose to spend your Arcanums is up to you, as long as you spend all of them before using either charge again. It is worth noting though, that in terms of power level, Ruby is strongest, then Emerald and then Topaz, regardless of whether you choose to use auto attacks or not. At level 26, you learn the spells Outburst and Precious Brilliance. Outburst does damage in an area of effect, or AoE for short, and is more effective than regular Ruin when there are 3 or more targets. Ether Charge also boosts the damage of Outburst, so you should use Outburst during Ether Charge when there are 3 or more targets as well. Precious Brilliance functions as an AoE version of Gemshine, and turns into Ruby Outburst, Topaz Outburst, or Emerald Outburst depending on which attunement you have. These attacks also beat their Ruin counterparts with 3 or more targets. A notable detail is that Topaz Outburst does more damage than regular Outburst, unlike Topaz Ruin. Simply use the Outburst spells in place of the Ruin spells when there are at least 3 enemies in range to do so. At level 30, Ruin 1 is permanently upgraded to Ruin 2, and this also upgrades Ruby, Topaz and Emerald Ruin to their Ruin 2 counterparts, increasing the damage of all 4 spells slightly. However, this changes nothing for your actual attack rotation. Also at level 30, doing your class questline will eventually lead you to the Summoner quest, which is available once you complete the main scenario quest, Self Management. Once you unlock the Summoner, remember to equip your Soul Crystal to change into the Summoner job. The starting trait of the Summoner permanently replaces Summon Ruby with Summon Ifrit, which does slightly more damage, but does not change your rotation at all. At level 35, Summon Topaz is replaced with Summon Titan, which does slightly more damage, just like Ifrit, and also does not change your rotation at all. At level 40, you learn the ability Pain Flare, which is an AoE alternative to Festa, which beats it when there are at least 3 targets. Just like with Outburst, simply replace Festa with Pain Flare when there are 3 targets in range. At level 44, you learn the role action and ability Surecast. This ability makes you immune to most knockbacks, and also makes you immune to interruption as a result of damage. What this means is that sometimes when you're hit with a particularly powerful attack, your spellcast is completely cancelled. This cannot happen when Surecast is active. At level 45, Summon Emerald is replaced with Summon Garuda, which completely replaces the attack it does with a significantly weaker attack that does AoE damage instead. Summon Garuda's damage is equal to Summon Ifrit and Titan when there are at least 5 targets, and is stronger with more targets than that. This actually makes Summon Garuda and its wind attunements weaker than simply casting regular Ruin, unless there are at least 3 targets to be hit by Summon Garuda. And this means that there is a benefit to skipping Garuda entirely on 1 or 2 targets. However, this is only the case from level 45 to 49, because... 
At level 50, you learn the trait in Kindle, which overrides all three summons attacks with a new attack. All three do the same damage, with a portion of the damage done in an AoE. It is worth pointing out that each of the primals have slightly different shapes of attack. Ifrit will run up to the target and fire a 5 yarn cone in front of it when the target is exactly within range, so the attack will primarily hit enemies between you and the target. Titan strikes in a 5 yarn circle around it when the target is exactly within range, so the attack will, again, primarily hit enemies between you and the target. Garuda's attack actually hits in a 5 yarn circle around the target, and so its area of effect strikes in a more common pattern. Also at level 50, you can do the quest An Eggy by Any Other Name to unlock Eggy Glamours, which allows you to customize your summons a bit. You can choose what your passive Kabongle looks like, or even what appears when you cast Summon Ifrit, Titan and Garuda. Now, to round off, let's cover an actual boss fight opener and rotation. Make sure that Kabongle is summoned, as you need it for many of your spells. As the tank runs up to the target, start casting Ruin and then weave Energy Drain. Then cast Ether Charge, weaving faster. Then cast Ruin, weaving another faster. And then cast Ruin until Ether Charge ends. When Ether Charge ends, work your way through summoning primals and spending their attunements in any order you like. To maximize your damage, start with Ifrit, then Garuda, and then Titan. And make sure to get up close and personal with enemies to get some out attacks in, as they do add some damage. For a more mobile order, prioritize Garuda and Titan higher than Ifrit, but remember that you need to find time to cast Ifrit and its Ruby Ruins at some point. Swift Cast can be used to avoid the cast time of one of the Ruby Ruins though. Alternatively, you can also use Swift Cast after the fifth Ruin during Ether Charge to sneak one final Ruin in during the damage buff. However, doing this consistently will mean you never have Swift Cast if you need it for Ruby Ruin mobility or resurrection. So despite the damage gain, I do not recommend making this a habit. Once all the Arcanums and Attunements are spent, simply cast Ruin until Ether Charge is ready again, and then repeat it from the beginning. Energy Drain should also be ready at this point. When there are three or more targets, replace Regular, Ruby, Topaz and Emerald Ruin with their Outburst counterparts, and replace Festa with Pain Flare. Consider that Ifrit and Titan have somewhat awkward area of effects, and the best way to maneuver them is to target the enemy furthest away from you when casting them. A trick worth learning for keeping up the pressure while the tank is pulling mobs is to try and plan it so that Titan and Garuda are available after each fight, so that you can use their instant spell options to keep attacking while running with your team. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can make sure to let the YouTube algorithm know by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing and hitting the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, originally Ruby Ruin had a recast time of 2.5 with a cast time of 2.8, which meant that swift casting it was a substantial damage gain over not doing so. With this change, the summoner no longer has any spells that directly derive a damage gain from being swift casted, which is probably for the best, as it frees up swift cast with the supportive action of resurrection more often.